さて何回ですか<笑>十十回小僧からだ歯を食いしばってる十回俺を二十回殴ってくれおお面白いいい度胸だ<笑>アーンハイドは彼はスフェルカを愛しているので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。しかし、アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。アーンハイドは彼に食事を与えたので彼は彼に食事を与えたのです。She informs them that Katil is returning home today and may bring guests, so they need to be ready for them. As they continue their work, Einar and Thorfinn take a moment to admire their growing crops. Einar becomes excited at the prospect of being able to buy his freedom in a few years. He wonders if Arnheid has a similar deal, but isn't sure if it's appropriate to ask. Thorfinn suggests that he simply inquire, but Einar is hesitant. Not sure what to do next, Einar suggests that they pray. He drops to his knees and asks God for rain and protection from insects. Thorfinn joins them, and together they pray for a bountiful harvest. Before we continue, hop on down to the comment section to answer the question of the day. What is the strongest anime character? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. And now, back to the recap. Katil strides back to his home, Thorgil in tow, and his son can't help but wonder how his mother and Almar are doing. After a brief pause, Katil assures Thorgil that Almar is raring to go, ready to charge headfirst into battle. Despite his enthusiasm, Katil knows that Almar isn't in fighting shape and must stay put. Thorgil disagrees, pointing out that a battle can change a man for the better, and cites King Canute as an example. Snake and his crew catch sight of Katil and Thorgil and make a beeline towards them to say hello. Snake is floored that Thorgil survived the rigors of training, but Thorgil credits Snake with his success. Katil then asks Snake what he's been up to, and Snake reveals that he's caught a pair of thieving children. He planned on turning them over to Katil so that he could mete out some punishment. Over dinner, Thorgil brings up battles and regales Olmar with tales of post fight savagery. Thorgil then asks Olmar if he's game to head to England and join the fray, to which Olmar enthusiastically agrees. Thorgil then presents Almar with a gruesome souvenir, a necklace adorned with dried ears. Almar recoils in horror and flings the necklace across the room. Thorgil chuckles at Almar's reaction, but Katil's sons aren't amused. Thorgil then takes the opportunity to school Almar on his father's legendary status in battle. Katil then insists that they get some rest, but Snake presses him to deal with the thieving children first. As Katil and Thorgil make their way back to the scene of the crime, the atmosphere is tense. The children plead for mercy, but Katil is resolute. Their punishment must be severe. Suddenly, Thorgil interjects with a plan to put the children's thieving skills to good use, much to Katil's surprise. Despite his initial reluctance, Katil realizes that Thorgil's plan could be the perfect solution. As Katil talks to the two kids, he inquires about their names and learns that the boy is called Stuur and his younger sister's name is Thora. Katil then asks if someone can speak up for their defense, to which Snake chimes in and explains that their family includes a sick mother and a baby, who was left behind as the mother couldn't come. When Katil inquires about their father, Stuur reveals that his name is Snorri and he went missing last fall while selling vegetables. Pater informs Katil that Snorri owes him money on the land he rents, which adds another layer of complexity to the situation. 
Despite the gravity of the situation, Catil tries to find a solution that would not involve harming the children. He suggests that Stur could work to compensate for what they stole, while Pater volunteers to teach him how to farm. Catil is relieved to have found a way out of the dilemma, but Snake believes that the kids need an actual punishment to learn a lesson. To Catil's surprise, Pater suggests that a beating would be appropriate, while Thorgil agrees with him. The tension mounts as Snake takes out the blade of an axe and asks Catil how many times to hit the children. Catil is initially hesitant, but ultimately decides on 10 strokes. Stur, however, asks to be hit 20 times and to spare his sister. Thorgil is intrigued by this and volunteers to do the beating himself. Snake cautions him not to go too far, but Thorgil swings the axe and sends Stur flying with a single hit. Shocked by what he sees, Catil rushes to stop Thorgil and decides to take matters into his own hands. Later that evening, Catil makes his way to bed early with Arnheid. In a moment of vulnerability, he confesses that the Iron Fist persona he portrays is nothing but a facade. He confines in Arnheid that he is paralyzed by his fear of Thorgil, war, and violence. With empathy in her heart, Arnheid reminds him that kindness is never a weakness. In that instant, Catil feels a sense of relief he has not experienced in a long time. He admits that Arnheid is the only one who has ever given him the courage to embrace his true self. He pleads with her to stay by his side, for without her, his world is an abyss of darkness. What a depressing way to end off this episode. Will Catil find his courage? Will he be able to overcome his inner trauma? Find out on our next recap of Vinland Saga Season 2.